Probably, I would say planning for a gallon a day would be sufficient for a normal, normal family. Hey everybody, welcome back to Caddy Wampus Acres. It is Jason, thank you so much for joining us here. And uh, what I wanted to talk about today and what I wanted to cover is a question we often get. How many goats do you need to provide milk for a family of four, five, let's say? So that's what we're gonna address today, so make sure you stay tuned. So a big question we get here at Caddy Wampus Acres is how many goats do I need to get in order to start a uh, milking program, if you will, for my family, let's say a family of four, family of five, that's going to provide enough for milk and cheese, let's say, and maybe even if you want to add some soap. Well, a lot of that's going to depend on the demand that your family specifically has. So you first have to decide what are we going to use the goat milk for? Now, if you're heavy consumers of dairy and you want to get away from cow's milk and go wholly to goat milk, uh, what you want to do is um, probably, I would say planning for a gallon a day would be sufficient for a normal, normal family. Because some days you may actually go through a gallon, but other days you're not going to. I think it's highly unlikely that your family is going to be guzzling a gallon of milk a day. Probably not very likely. Which leaves you some more for uh, making cheese, making soap, uh, making ice cream, and cajeta, which is a uh, Mexican caramel or caramel, however you want to say it. Uh, that's made from goat's milk and all the other little awesome things like yogurt and stuff. So the gallon a day I think is a pretty good standard for you to use um, if you want to provide enough milk for your family. So that's seven gallons a week. That's a lot of milk. So the good thing is you can actually do a gallon a day on a small homestead farm with just a few goats. We have a mixed herd here at Caddy Wampus Acres. We have La Manchas, which can easily produce um, a half a gallon a day without an issue, sometimes up to a gallon a day if you're milking twice a day. We also have Nigerian dwarfs, which if you're milking twice a day will probably provide around a quart, maybe more, depending on your milking lines. And because we have this mixed herd, we also have mini manchas, which we currently don't know how much we're going to get from uh, Laurel back there. Also you have to figure out if you're going to be breeding them on the your farm or if you're going to sort of stud them out if you will with a buck from another farm but that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video so i would say if you want to do a gallon a day and you want to use la manchas let's say or one of the full-size dairy breeds like sonnens alpines nubians something like that where you're going to potentially get a gallon a day from one goat that will be one to two does and if you're going to go with a miniature breed such as the Nigerian Dwarf, which is really the only true miniature dairy goat breed, then you're probably gonna wanna go three to four and make sure their milking lines are fairly good. Because you may, like we've had happen here, uh, you may have a girl that only gives you like a pint a day and so that may hinder that a little bit. So if you wanna just solely stick to miniature breeds, I would say three to four Nigerian Dwarfs would be a good compromise there. You're also gonna to have to determine whether you wanna milk by hand or not and how much time you have. You're definitely gonna to wanna to milk twice a day for the most production you can get. And when you're doing so, you definitely wanna milk 12 hours apart. And so 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. And what I will say and what we've noticed and certainly the case, sorry about the rooster, is that if we get off, maybe we're too early or too late, it does tend to slow the milking down. Also remember, you won't need to breed as much or freshen, as we call it, as much if you go with the La Manchas compared to the Nigerians, which will have to be freshened regularly every mm, probably 10 months or so. But milking by hand is very reasonable for just a couple, two to four goats, whether they be full size or miniature. And when you get in the routine, it just sort of becomes part of your thing. If you stay with us in future videos, we will talk about um, what you want to feed your dairy goats, specifically if they are in milk. But today we really wanted to just cover the things but today we really just wanted to cover how many goats you need to get started because that is such a big question that we get here. Another thing to remember is if you do keep a buck on your property and you are milking, you are not going to want the bucks to get with the does during their milking season. It will taint the taste of the milk 
and they also have the chance to get pregnant again, which sort of will wear on their bodies. So if you're wanting to get started with dairy goats and you said, I want to get started with full size breeds, get yourself two. If you said, I want to start with miniatures like Nigerian dwarfs, get yourself three to four, depending on the milking lines and um, how well they do. We have to get Veruca bred here, speaking of dairy goats. She's looking nice and healthy, um, but we got to get her with Quag, who is right there, so we can get her bred. This is her prime breeding season right now, isn't that right? Isn't that right? Now Luna over there, we're going to attempt to breed with Miyagi again. We've done it once, and that worked very well. It's just um, everything doesn't match up, if you will. You know what I mean? Charlotte will most likely be going to a new farm soon. And then her mama, Peyton, is in milk right now, and so we will be milking her. Same with Jolene, who is also in milk. <laughs> Laurel is ready to be bred. She is our mini mancha. She's never been bred before. She's uh, over a year old now, and so she's ready to go. Opal just came out of milk, so we were giving her a break, and uh, we will be breeding her with Quag as well. So we will have tons of La Mancha babies. We're also going to give Francine another shot. Probably, if we can't get Francine bred this year, uh, she's probably going to have to go to another farm because uh, we can't just have goats just freeloading off of us. And the babies, look at them. We all just look at that. Those precious little things. Got Tommy over here. Oh, he's looking so, so sweet. Miyagi is getting ready, same with Roger and Quag, to get into breeding mode, isn't that right? Match them up with their girlfriends and they'll be ready to go. They've been eating and getting plump so they can get ready for breeding season. It's important to make sure your bucks are really healthy and high protein when it's time for them to breed because it does take a lot out of them. Got the rest of the fam over here working hard. Hey, who is that? If you watch our Instagram reels and our shorts, you probably know who this is already, but this is our new addition. This is Tango. He's our European Doberman Pinscher. He's a red and rust, and uh, he's going to be our inside protection animal. He's a sweet boy. And then you got <laughs> that one. Kevin, you all know Kevin. Kevin's our Pyrenees. So Kevin, we're going to keep outside. We'll be finishing our fence back here in the next couple weeks and so he will be out here guarding the herd a you got a strawberry that's one of our strawberries yeah. we're gonna we're gonna eat it oh you're gonna you think you're gonna eat it <laughs> lauren gonna eat it here can i have a bite i'll just have a little bite another one. Mm, that's good probably could have spent just a couple more days on there i'll see it you want a bite lauren that's our little strawberry bed it's been doing pretty good as you can see, the orchard needs to be pruned, but is growing really good. Got these tomatoes that need to go in the ground. Our figs need to go in the ground. And um, this is the broccoli that we've been growing in a pot. So if you've been following along with that, that's pretty awesome. I think we're about to get ahead on here pretty soon. Potted up our cherry tomatoes. <laughs> can you see that? That guy right there. Our sun sugars are potted up and our time bomb peppers are potted up and then I need to pot up the tobacco as well. I've never grown tobacco, so give us some tips down below. <laughs> so I wanted to take a quick second and talk about boots. Uh, if you've watched our channel for a while, you know we've done a couple reviews on high C boots and um, I've really loved them. I have a couple of longer pairs. I actually have a really long pair, um, a like sort of a little bit shorter medium length and then uh, they reached out and said they wanted me to do some more testing so um, I figured I would get some short ones so check these out it is summertime looking good don't mind my injury on my leg there that was from a fence post but these are pretty awesome I like them we did the garden with them they're pretty nice the thing to remember about high C boots is they are built very well. Um, they do have a lifetime guarantee on them. And I'm going to remind you of their 100 pledge. That is 100% dry and 100% warm. So these ones are, um, I don't need them to be overly warm and they're about the right temperature. I was not sweating in them or anything like that. And I like having them off my calf. 
but um, the longer ones are really awesome when it comes to keeping your feet warm and if you've watched my previous videos about it you see that I step in a bucket of water and it's perfectly fine so I really like them and you can check out the link below all about high C products and uh, you can become a product tester yourself so remember that also, do not forget to check out cattywampusacres.com and get yourself some soap. We have some awesome collections on there, and we have a bundle and save deal that you can do now where you save 10% if you get three or more bars on our bundle and save page. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us here at Cattywampus Acres. Remember, we always say, when you homestead, you're home fed, and that really, really applies to dairy goats. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a link right about this region here to a video where we show you how we milk goats and you can learn how to milk goats from this video right here. So after this, make sure you check that out. But other than that, that's all we got for you guys. Thank you so much. Make sure you stay tuned to all of our socials so you can learn everything you need to know about goats. We'll see you guys next time.